Elon Musk says beware because he has accidentally found out the pyramids of Egypt hold dark secrets that would send shivers down your spine. According to Elon, the ancient structures that have captivated humanity for centuries are not what they seem. Musk now has strong arguments why he believes that the pyramids were constructed by aliens and recent discoveries have turned everything we know about their construction upside down. Scientists delving into the depths of the pyramid have uncovered a sinister presence that has been buried for thousands of years. The discovery is considered one of the most important in the history of the pyramids. As scientists found out, the pyramids of Egypt are not just structures. They are a gateway to another realm. That, to say the least, is very scary. So, the Great Pyramid, believed to have been constructed approximately 4,500 years ago during Egypt's Old Kingdom, was a symbol of the power and influence of the highly centralized monarchy of the time. People are so fascinated with these structures because when pyramids were built, the world was vastly different from what it is today. At that time, humans were still living in the Stone Age and had not yet developed any form of writing. Agriculture was just beginning to emerge in several regions of the world, and people were still primarily hunter-gatherers. In the Middle East, the Sumerian civilization was just beginning to emerge in Mesopotamia, and the first city-states were being established. The ancient civilizations of the Indus Valley was also flourishing in what is now India and Pakistan. In Europe, the megalithic culture was developing, and massive stone structures like Stonehenge were being constructed. In Africa, the Sahara was a fertile savanna with a thriving human population, while in the Americas, the Olmec civilization was emerging in what is now Mexico. Comprised of 2.3 million pieces of limestone and granite, some weighing up to 80 tons, the Great Pyramid is considered the pinnacle of the pharaoh's power. Pyramid building was a major industry in ancient Egypt, reflecting the society's focus on the construction of these monumental structures. So the question is, how is this possible? In that period, with that development, how were pyramids built? And one theory that is shared by the Tesla CEO Elon Musk suggests that the pyramids were built with the help of extraterrestrial intervention. Upon hearing this theory, some people may initially reject it. Nevertheless, the idea of extraterrestrial intervention is a reasonable theory. Considering the evidence about the pyramids, it is plausible to suggest that ancient civilizations may not have had the capability to construct such remarkable structures unaided. After Elon Musk tweeted that aliens had built the pyramids, garnering over 84,000 retweets, Rana al Mashat, Egypt's Minister of International Cooperation, responded on Twitter, expressing appreciation for Musk's work but urging him to consider the scientific evidence surrounding the construction of the pyramids. Despite the advanced technology we have today, we are still unable to construct pyramids that match the scale and complexity of the ones in Egypt. Consequently, it is difficult to imagine how an ancient civilization with primitive technology could have possessed both the technological know-how and the creativity required to construct the pyramids with such extraordinary accuracy. That's why Elon Musk's idea is not that impossible. A striking example of this precision is the Great Pyramid of Giza, which is orientated almost exactly to true north, with a deviation of just 3 60th of a degree. Notably, this level of accuracy is even greater than that of the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, London, which deviates from true north by 9 60th of a degree. The Great Pyramid also possesses a notable mathematic aspect in that the ratio of its perimeter to its height is almost equal to 2 pi, with only a minor difference. There are many other highly precise mathematical features associated with the pyramids. However, the most crucial factor to consider is the speed at which they were constructed. Taking into account the estimated 2.3 million stones used to build the pyramid with an average weight of 2.5 tons per stone, it has been calculated that one stone could have been put in place every two minutes. This time frame incorporates the stone cutting process, transportation of the rocks across the desert for miles, hauling the stones up the pyramid ramp and fitting them perfectly into place. It is highly unlikely that primitive humans could have achieved this level of construction efficiently. Another theory about extraterrestrial intervention suggests that the aliens may have provided the ancient Egyptians with other advanced technologies, such as anti-gravity devices or levitation technology that would have made it possible to move and lift the massive stone blocks with ease. Proponents of this theory point to the fact that some of the blocks used in the construction of the pyramids are so large that they would have required an incredible amount of force to move, even with a large number of people working together. In 2002, the National Geographic Society, supported by an exploration of the Great Pyramid's air shafts, and more recently, in October 2015, the Scan Pyramids project was launched to use various technologies to explore Egypt's largest pyramids. The project aims to uncover new information about the pyramid's interiors, which are more complex than most people realize. The Scan Pyramids project relies on the natural emission of subatomic particles, called muons, which are constantly generated by cosmic rays colliding with the Earth's upper atmosphere. 
Muons can pass through solid objects more easily than empty space, making it possible to map the solid and empty parts of a building using multiple muon detectors. This technique has been used to explore other structures, such as Mayan pyramids and cathedrals. While muons cannot be seen with the naked eye, they can be detected using special films and sensors that trace their 3D paths, making them a valuable tool for scientific exploration. So, Physicist Konohiro Moshima and a team installed muon detectors inside the Great Pyramid to collect data for several months. In March 2016, their initial findings were published, showing that a previously unknown area deep within the pyramid's interior allowed a much higher number of muons to pass through than expected. The excess muons suggested the existence of a 100-foot long chamber with a cross-section resembling the Grand Gallery. And to verify the newly discovered void in the Great Pyramid, more investigation is necessary. The void, which is at least 100 feet long and located in an empty area, has an unknown purpose, and researchers are currently avoiding the term chamber to describe it. During a press conference, co-author of the study and president of the Heritage Innovation Presentation, HIP Institute, Mehdi Tayobi, stated that they do not yet know if the void is flat or inclined, or if it is made up of one or multiple successive structures. What is known is that this discovery is remarkable and was not predicted by any theory. Further research will be required to understand the purpose and structure of this newly discovered void in the Great Pyramid. And there is a persistent theory that suggests that these monumental structures were not built by conventional means, but instead using some sort of lost ancient technology. While there is little evidence to support this idea, it remains a popular subject of speculation and debate. One of the main arguments put forward by proponents of the lost ancient technology theory is the sheer size and weight of the blocks used to construct the pyramids. Some have suggested that the only way such enormous stones could have been moved and lifted into place is through the use of advanced technology, such as levitation or anti-gravity devices. However, this theory is highly unlikely, as there is no evidence of such technology existing in ancient times, and no accounts or depictions of it in any ancient texts or records. Even more, there is ample evidence that the ancient Egyptians possessed the technology and skills necessary to quarry, transport, and lift the massive stones used in the construction of the pyramids. For example, there are numerous quarries in the vicinity of the pyramids, where the stone was extracted and shaped using simple but effective techniques. The stones were then transported to the construction site using a combination of sledges, rollers and boats, as well as a system of canals and ramps. Finally, the blocks were lifted into place using a combination of ramps, pulleys and levers, with the labour of thousands of workers. Another argument put forward by proponents of the lost ancient technology theory is the precision of the construction of the pyramids. The stones used in the construction of the pyramids were cut to an incredibly high degree of accuracy, with joints that are so tight that a razor blade cannot be inserted between them. This has led some to suggest the ancient Egyptians must have had access to some kind of advanced cutting and shaping tools, perhaps using laser technology. However, there is no evidence to support this theory, and in fact, the precision of the construction of the pyramids can be attributed to the skill and craftsmanship of the ancient Egyptian stonemasons. These craftsmen were highly skilled and were trained from a young age in the art of stone cutting and shaping. They used simple but effective tools, such as copper chisels and wooden mallets, combined with a keen eye for detail and a great deal of patience and perseverance. It's interesting to point out that Nikola Tesla, who had previously researched wireless energy transmission, considered the possibility of pyramids being enormous energy transmitters. In 1905, Tesla filed a patent titled The Art of Transmitting Electrical Energy Through the Natural Medium, which described a design for a worldwide network of generators that could collect energy from the ionosphere, the ionized part of the Earth's upper atmosphere. His unique triangle-shaped design gained attention and became known as Tesla's Electromagnetic Pyramid. However, Tesla believed it was not just the shape of the pyramids that gave them power, but their location, as he sought to take advantage of the Earth's energy field. Tesla built the Tesla Experimental Station in Colorado Springs and the Warden Cliff Tower on the East Coast, taking into account the relationship between the planet's elliptical orbit and the equator to optimize wireless energy transmission. Tesla's peculiar obsession with numbers, particularly 3, 6, and 9, was another aspect of his thinking. He believed that these numbers held the key to the universe, and he often made decisions in sets of three. For example, he would circle buildings three times before entering and stay in hotels with numbers divisible by three. Some people speculate that this obsession may be related to his fascination with pyramids, which he believed were connected to fundamental mathematical laws and ratios that were part of a universal mathematical language. However, despite all Tesla's theories, we are still left with a pressing question of how and why the pyramids were actually constructed. And one of the most plausible is the theory that the ancient Egyptians used water to help move the blocks. 
This theory suggests that the builders of the pyramids used a system of canals and waterways to transport the massive stone blocks from the quarries to the construction sites. By using water to float the blocks along the canals, the workers could move the blocks much more easily and efficiently than by using sledges or rollers. This theory is supported by several pieces of evidence, including the presence of canals and waterways in the vicinity of the pyramids and the discovery of watermarks on some of the stone blocks. One of the key arguments in support of this theory is the sheer weight of the stone blocks used in the construction of the pyramids. Some of the largest blocks were transported over great distances from the quarries to the construction sites. While it is certainly possible that the workers could have used sledges or rollers to move the blocks over land, the use of water would have made the process much easier and more efficient. By floating the blocks along the canals, the workers would have been able to move them with minimal effort, taking advantage of the natural buoyancy of the water. Another argument in favor of the theory is the presence of canals and waterways in the vicinity of the pyramids. While many of these canals have since dried up or been filled in, evidence suggests that they were once used to transport goods and materials along the Nile Valley. It is certainly possible that the workers who built the pyramids would have made use of these canals to transport the massive stone blocks. The discovery of watermarks on some of the stone blocks used in the construction of the pyramids provides compelling evidence in support of the theory. These watermarks, which have been found on some of the blocks in the Great Pyramid of Giza, suggest that the blocks were transported by water at some point during the construction process. While it is not clear exactly how the blocks were moved along the waterways, the presence of these watermarks is a strong indication that water played a significant role in the construction of the pyramids. There is one more interesting theory that involves water in the process of constructing pyramids. This theory suggests that wet sand was used to help move and position the massive stone blocks used in the construction of the pyramids. The use of wet sand to move heavy objects is not a new concept. This technique, known as fluidization, has been studied and tested by scientists and engineers in modern times. The theory suggests that the ancient Egyptians may have used a similar technique to move and position the massive stone blocks used in the construction of the pyramids. The theory suggests that the ancient Egyptians may have used a mixture of water and sand to create a kind of slurry, which would have allowed the workers to move and position the blocks much more easily and efficiently. Another argument in favor of the theory is the presence of evidence that supports the use of wet sand in construction in other parts of the ancient world. For example, there is evidence to suggest that the ancient Greeks used wet sand in the construction of their temples and other buildings. This suggests that the ancient Egyptians may have also used this technique in the construction of the pyramids. There is also evidence to suggest that the ancient Egyptians were highly skilled in the art of engineering and mechanics. For example, the ancient Egyptians were known for their advanced irrigation systems, which required a sophisticated understanding of fluid dynamics. If the ancient Egyptians were able to build such complex irrigation systems, it is possible they may have also used fluidization techniques in the construction of the pyramids. While the theory that the Egyptians used wet sand to aid in the construction of the pyramids is intriguing, it is also highly controversial. One of the main arguments against the theory is the lack of concrete evidence to support it. Furthermore, one of the most widely accepted is the theory that the pyramids were built using a system of levers and counterweights. This theory suggests that the builders of the pyramids used a relatively simple yet effective method to lift and move the massive stones used in their construction. The use of levers and counterweights is a time-honored method of engineering and has been used for thousands of years to lift heavy objects. The method involves using a lever to apply a force to an object and then balancing the force with a counterweight. The lever amplifies the force applied to the object, making it possible to lift much heavier weights than would be possible with just the human strength. The method is believed to have been used by the ancient Egyptians to lift the massive blocks of stone used in the construction of the pyramids. One of the most notable features of the pyramids is the precision with which the massive stone blocks were cut and fitted together. The builders of the pyramids used a system of interlocking blocks, which allowed them to create a strong and stable structure. To achieve this precision, the blocks had to be lifted and moved with great care and accuracy. The use of levers and counterweights would have made it possible to lift and position the blocks with a high degree of accuracy, enabling the builders to create the precise stable structure that we see today. Another factor that supports the theory of levers and counterweights is the existence of numerous quarries in the vicinity of the pyramids. These quarries provided the builders with the massive blocks of stone used in the construction of the pyramids. The use of levers and counterweights would have made it possible to transport these blocks from the quarries to the construction site, which in some cases were located several kilometers away. The blocks would have been loaded onto sledges or rollers and then pulled or pushed by teams of workers using levers to overcome the resistance of the stone. By using counterweights to balance the forces, the workers would have been able to move the blocks much more easily than by simply using brute force. 
Also, one theory that has been proposed to explain how ancient Egyptians were able to construct these massive structures is the zigzagging ramp theory. This theory suggests that the pyramids were built using a series of zigzagging ramps that allowed the workers to transport the heavy stones to the top of the pyramid. The zigzagging ramp theory proposes that the workers used a series of ramps that zigzagged up the side of the platform to transport the stones to the top. The ramps were built at an incline of approximately 20 degrees, and these were wide enough to allow several workers to push the heavy blocks up the ramp. As the workers reached the end of one ramp, they would turn and continue up the next ramp in a zigzag pattern. One of the main advantages of the zigzagging ramp theory is that it allows for the construction of the pyramid to occur in a much shorter time frame than other theories. By using multiple ramps, the workers would be able to transport the stones to the top of the pyramid much more quickly than if they were using a single ramp. The zigzagging pattern of the ramps would help to distribute the weight of the stones more evenly, which would reduce the stress on the ramp and make it less likely to collapse. Another advantage of the zigzagging ramp theory is that it is consistent with the evidence that has been found at the Great Pyramids of Giza. Archaeological evidence shows that there were ramp structures built on the sides of the pyramids during the construction process. What's more, there are grooves in the stone blocks that suggest they were moved using some type of ramp system. However, there are also some criticisms of the zigzagging ramp theory. One of the main criticisms is that there is no evidence of such ramps at the site of the Great Pyramid. The theory assumes that the workers were able to build the ramps as they went along, which would have required a tremendous amount of time and resources. Despite these criticisms, the zigzagging ramp theory remains one of the most reasonable explanations for how the Great Pyramids of Giza were constructed. While there is still much debate and discussion among scholars about the exact method of construction, the zigzagging ramp theory provides a compelling explanation that is consistent with the evidence that has been found at the site. Regardless of the method used, the construction of the pyramid stands as a testament to the ingenuity and skill of the ancient Egyptians and continues to inspire awe and wonder in people around the world. Now, a team of international scientists and architects are peering into the depths of these ancient monuments with state-of-the-art technology. But what they have uncovered is beyond anything they could have imagined. Officials have announced that anomalies have been discovered within Egypt's Khufu pyramid, only two weeks into a thermal scanning project aimed at uncovering the mysteries of the famous pharaonic monument, including the possibility of concealed burial chambers. After two weeks, a team of architects and scientists from Egypt, Canada, France and Japan released a joint statement indicating that they have detected thermal anomalies on the monuments, including the Khufu pyramid. As part of an international project called Scan Pyramids, scientists are utilizing state-of-the-art infrared technology and cosmic rays to delve into the innermost parts of the pyramids. According to Egypt's Ministry of Antiquities, thermal scanning has revealed strange readings within the Giza pyramids, with a particular striking one located on the eastern side of the largest pyramid. This announcement follows the ministry's recent report of temperature anomalies discovered in King Tutankhamun's tomb during a similar scan located hundreds of miles away in the south. Heat anomalies are often indicative of structural features that are hidden beneath or beyond the surface being scanned because empty spaces do not retain heat as efficiently as rock or soil. These anomalies could potentially indicate the presence of concealed chambers or passages at ancient sites. However, it's also possible that the anomalies are due to more mundane differences in structure or composition, such as cracks in the underlying rock. According to the ministry, Anomalies were discovered along the northern and western walls of Tutankhamun's burial chamber in the Valley of the Kings near Luxor when it was scanned with infrared cameras. This finding aligns with other indications that there might be another burial chamber, possibly belonging to Tutankhamun's stepmother, Nefertiti, located beyond these walls. At the same time, a group of international researchers from the Scan Pyramids team conducted infrared scans of the exterior of the Giza pyramids, located near Cairo, during both sunrise and sunset. At sunrise, the morning sun was beginning to heat up the monuments, while at sunset, the pyramids were in the process of cooling down. The ministry reported that the scientists observed intriguing anomalies in the heating and cooling cycle, with a particular notable temperature variation detected at the Great Pyramid of Khufu, Cheops. Aram Online quoted the Egyptian Antiquities Minister, Mamdou el Damati as stating that three of the limestone blocks in the first row of the Great Pyramid showed differences in formation. He added that a similar discovery was made in the center of the eastern side of the pyramid. Further ground scans hinted at the possibility of a small passage that leads up to the pyramid and terminates at a location with a differing temperature, according to the minister. According to Elder Matty, it is premature to determine the source of the anomalies. He was quoted as saying, it could be empty spaces, cracks or passages. Currently, I don't know. 
He also invited other Egyptologists to join the research effort. The Scan Pyramids project is utilizing advanced technology such as thermal imaging cameras, cosmic ray detectors, lasers, and drones to create detailed maps of Egypt's historical monuments. The pyramids were built over 4,500 years ago, and King Tutankhamun's tomb was constructed approximately 3,300 years ago. Also, Mehdi Taobi, the founder of the Paris-based Heritage Innovation Preservation Institute, stated, This anomaly is really quite impressive, and it's just in front of us, at the ground level. The institute is leading the scan pyramids experiments, using a combination of infrared thermology, marine radiography, and 3D reconstruction. The scans were performed at various times during the day and night, and the temperature was recorded as the stones warmed up and cooled down. The temperature difference between most neighboring stones was usually between 0.1 and 0.5 degrees, but one particular segment showed a remarkable 6-degree variation in the thermal scans. We have several hypotheses, but no conclusion for the moment, said Tyobi. According to Egyptologist Beth Ann Judas, the presence of the anomaly on the eastern side of the pyramid is not surprising, as that side was a major focal point of the pyramid, with several important temples and tombs situated there. The Nile was to the east of the pyramid, and most everyone would have approached from the east, she said. Pyramids also have a connection to the solar aspect and the cult of the god Ra in ancient Egyptian religion. According to Judas, who has extensive experience working in Egypt, the Khufu Pyramid boasts the most intricate network of passages among all pyramids and could have undergone several alterations during its construction. The original burial chamber, for instance, is situated underground, but the final resting place of the pharaoh was eventually relocated to the king's chamber at the top of the pyramid. Judith suggests that the source of the anomaly could be linked to the early stages of the pyramid's construction and that first burial chamber. At the very least, this anomaly will shed additional light on the construction techniques of the 4th dynasty Egyptians, said Judas. It's rather exciting, actually. Over the past few years, archaeologists have been learning more about the workmen and officials who are connected to the pyramids, and this gives us more information about their work. As the Scan Pyramids project progresses, several other anomalies discovered at the Khufu Pyramid and other monuments will be analyzed. Khufu will offer us one of its secrets, the Egyptian antiquities minister told reporters at the pyramid. Neither the official nor the experts gave a concrete explanation for the anomalies, which could suggest the presence of a hidden room. The project encompasses thermal scanning of the Khafre Pyramid of Giza, as well as two pyramids in Dashur, all located south of Cairo. Khufu was constructed by the son of Snefru, the founder of the 4th dynasty, while Khafre was built by the son of Khufu. Snefru constructed the two pyramids at Dashur, of course, you remember when Elon Musk transformed his Twitter account into a hub for conspiracy theorists, with his provocative post that read, Aliens built the pyramids, obv. Despite the clear joking tone, some of his followers took the tweet seriously. Musk later added the actual fact that the Great Pyramid was the tallest human-made structure for 3,800 years and included a link to Wikipedia. The reason behind Musk, who made the headlines in the scientific field, indulging in baiting conspiracy theorists on social media is perplexing. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.